Now we're going to work with the blade steak. I think in Holland you call that the sukata. It's a really fantastic piece of meat. A lot of people think that they need to take out the piece of silver skin in the middle. But you don't have to. If you slice it thin enough, you'll be able to eat it and you will not notice that piece of silver skin in your mouth. There is absolutely no hindrance to your eating pleasure. So this is a really special cut. I actually don't know anybody else who does this cut. This is really a fantastic piece. And uh, First Light is the only one that I'm aware of who takes this piece out of the animal and packs it separately. So you can buy a whole carton just of these, which is fantastic. If you've got a barbecue restaurant, cooking over hot flame, something like that, perfect. Perfect for this. Really awesome. It does have a piece of silver skin on the top. We're going to take that off. And then we're going to leave this piece of silver skin in the middle and we're going to prove to you that you don't need to take that out. So we'll just trim that off. And then just make sure we get that little bit that I missed. And then just off the bottom here, sometimes there's a bit of silver skin. We'll get that off as well. And there we have it. It's such a wonderful shape, this piece. It's really, I love the shape of it. It's just asking to go on a barbecue, which is in summer what we're definitely going to do. But today we're cooking it a little bit differently. We've got some poached pears. We've got some ginger. We've got some manuka honey from New Zealand. And uh, then we just have a bit of crispy buckwheat and uh, parsnip to top it off. And really it's all about the meat on this dish. So we just want to keep that as the focus. So we're going to put a bit of oil onto our venison and make sure we oil it well. Always important with venison that you oil the meat really well. This is going to help you stop it from drying out. You don't want it to dry out on you. Both sides. And then in the pan with it. The pan nice and hot. You're going to see it both sides for two to three minutes. Make sure we do the edges. And then we're going to pop it in the oven at 160 degrees for five minutes. And then we're going to let it rest for at least five to six minutes before we cut it. And that way we'll have a really beautiful, medium rare, tender piece of cicada and uh, we'll serve it with our poached pears. It's going to be fantastic. So I've got it in the pan here. I've set it off on all sides. I'm just going to add the ginger, thinly sliced ginger in there. Just move it around in the pan with the meat. And a bit of the spring onion. And just add a little bit of oil to that just to get them Get them seared off. And then a nice spoonful of this manuka honey, very flavorful, very healthy honey from New Zealand. Get that in there. Get it all moving around onto the meat on all sides. And then we'll just pop that in the oven. We'll pop that in the oven for five minutes at 160 degrees. Pop it out to rest and then we'll slice it. So we uh, just got that out of the oven. We're going to let it rest there for at least five to six minutes. Let it take on its time. The ginger and the onions, they've just caramelized. We'll just pop those on top. We're going to use those, of course, all that beautiful flavor in there. And then... Oh, sticky with the honey, fantastic. So here we have our poached pear, just been poached. Um, water, touch of vinegar, a bit of extra salt and pepper. That's pretty much it. Very, this is a very clean dish in terms of its flavors. It's not too extreme. Generally, I go for quite punchy flavors, but today this one here is quite straight, quite a, quite a um, almost vanilla I guess you could say, in its flavor profile, but that's actually really nice too. And we're going to finish it off just with a bit of crispy buckwheat and some parsnip chips and a bit of salt, and, and life is good. Okay, now we've had it in the oven. It's had a chance to rest. We have this beautiful sukata here. 
take that off the top there, that caramelized ginger and spring onions. I need my taste tester. Gary, would you like to try? Uh, I think it's better that somebody else tries this and tells you rather than me. So we're just going to take a nice thin slice out of here. And then you can tell me if you notice that silver skin there in the middle. But yeah, basically, you can see them you can see through, it. right? Yeah, it's yeah. Very, very clear. Yeah. yeah. Okay, I'll, I'll give it a try then. Yeah. It's gone. It's like butter. It's gone. It's gone. Yeah. I can see it, I cannot taste it, and I cannot chew on it. Yeah. So it's gone. Yeah. So Eating is the proof of the pudding, right? That's so right. Well, you're my pudding, and right. you just proved <laughs> it. So, <laughs> uh, so we're going to slice that really thinly. And that just means you're taking a step out of the cooking process. You don't have to slice it, take out that silver skin, and then use it. You can leave that in there. No one is going to notice it when they're eating, even though visually it's so obvious. Once you get it in your mouth and start to eat it, you won't notice it. So we'll just take a couple of slices of that, put it to one side, just to make sure none of those juices are going to flow out onto the plate. We'll pop that on top of our poached pear, like that. Take a bit of our caramelized ginger and spring onions. And then we have a bit of crispy buckwheat. Just spread that out over it. A bit of our parsnip chip as well. But first, we're going to just put on a little bit of a lemon hollandaise, so quite a citrus flavor. Parsnip chips, that'll go nicely with the ginger and the honey. Parsnip chips, our caramelized ginger and spring onions. And then just a touch of that lovely peppery but slightly sour oxalis, and then it's a beautiful dish. So that's the cicada. Easy to prepare in the pan. We don't have to take that silver skin out of the middle. We can just finish it in the pan. We rolled it around with a bit of a honey ginger marinade, put it in the oven for six minutes at 160 degrees, and let it rest. And I think the proof is in the pudding. Enjoy. Enjoy.